What is going on guys? This is Versus All Gaming with my review of Maggie the Kingdom of Magic episode 22 and this episode right here it was definitely shocking as we got two major character death and not only that that ending right there is something very important that people definitely need to pay attention to and so the episode it starts off with with us seeing that the uh, the household members of Cohen you know a uh, Cohen Jens and we see now when it, when you use the power of the household we see that they're able to reach these gigantic sizes and they took out the black gen pretty easily and it was definitely cool to see the way that they fight but we we saw one of them it's like the uh, the fat guy he actually ate or you know he actually bit on one one of these black gens and that right there you know it's kind of like weird to think about because we all know this is like some black Ryu so let's say that he swallowed it will he fall you know into the darkness or what because I really don't think that you know it's, it's safe to be doing that but we see now that you know with, with, with their large bodies they took all the black things like it was nothing and we see Moga man here even, even though you know they they took out those black gens he's he's still not stopping as we see that you know he's just making more of them but we actually have Cohen here who walked to Koha and of course he was like apologizing to him and asking for forgiveness and we see that Cohen actually pulls out you know one of his swords and I just want to ask you did anybody think that he might kill Koha but we see now that he has this gen named Phoenix and of course you know it has these healing powers which he had used to fix Koha arm and now that he's alright I'm pretty sure that we're going to see him get back into the fight but now we see that not only are the black gen appearing again you know where they are but we also had them, you know, attacking the uh, the Liam Empire. But but before I get into that, I do want to speak about you know what happened between Alibaba and Cohen, because of course you know when Alibaba introduces himself, he already knows who Cohen is because he's the guy that has ruined Balbat. But not only that, he has he has this like massive army of the uh, the Co Empire, you know, surrounding him. So clearly they're gonna think that he's you know the enemy. Because we all know that he that he definitely has these ties with like Sinbad. So Alibaba here would like to play it off and we're trying to get, you know, Koma to acknowledge him. And so he was saying that, you know, he had came here to rescue Koha. And even though, you know, that right there would have worked to his advantage, Cohen here not only did he like turn this around, but he also humiliated Alibaba. So that right there definitely had to hurt him. And so now, now we see that Cohen thanked them, but everybody knows that you know Alibaba kind of like a joke now, because even though you know the prince did thank him, he still kind of put him like put him on blast. So that right there goes to show you that you really can't mess with Cohen. Like even if you don't, even if you don't attack him, he'll still like to show you with words. And so now we go to the Liam Empire, and and we have the uh, the Maggie here. And, she, and she's and she's seeing that all the black jeans are now coming at her because at first they were they were only going toward the uh, the co empire, but now they're heading this way as well. And then we see that she has all of these all, all she has the uh, the followers corps. They're all better and they can now fight. But she was saying that the guy with like the messed up face and move here, they should like take it easy. But they didn't bother you know listening to her because they could still fight. And we see now that she like even though she had to protect about everybody else, she was like thinking of Titus here because he's going through like through this hardship right now, because of course he he like wants to fight and put a stop to this war, but he also wants to make sure that like Mark is all right. He really can't decide you know what he should do, so he has like this like inner struggling going on, and he, you can't help but like feel for the character because we all know that he don't have much time left. So of course right now he having all this hardship inside of him because he has no idea what to do. But we see that the Maggie, she has made this barrier that's like keeping the black gens out. But we see that they, they do manage to break through it at some point and they actually, you know, are able to put their uh their the limb through it. But of course the followers of course they aren't gonna allow that and they actually jump onto the black gens and not only do they keep them out but we see that they like squeeze on, on their limbs so hard that it actually come off their body and that right there was like pretty cool but we see now that now now well in, in this part of the episode we like focus on Titus here and we see that he's struggling so much about about what to do 
because we see that he has so much like turmoil inside him that he's actually crying. And not only that, but he's also, you know, you know, holding Marga here, and she's the only one that actually was able to reach through him. Like that, that whole dialogue between them, it was just so freaking cute. Because I'm glad that you know Marga was able to convince him to do what's right, and now she actually went with him to the uh, to the to the fifth level district, and he went all the way to the bottom. And so now we see Titus here. He actually wants to save Mogamet by pulling him out from this like red orb or the furnace because that, that is where all the black rebuke is gathering and so we see that he actually used like the, the protective spell to cover Marga in like this magic veil so that way she won't lose any of her magoi and it definitely worked and it was definitely nice to see that you know this this uh, white rebuke it was, it, it was like surrounding them both because we always see like the black for you just coming out of this country now. It's kind of like everybody has fallen, even though it's just coming from like Mogamet. But these people are actually, you know, cheering on for this, even though this for you is tainted. I, like it's like the, the people don't know that the truth behind it, which is kind of sad actually. But we see now that that Titus, he actually wants to save Mogamet. He been storing like this this uh this this mad going inside of him for the last fourteen years. And and that girl following this, you know, her, her she she she's a Moo sister, but I forgot her name. It's like uh Mi Miron, Morin, something like that. But we see now that she definitely knows that like Titus had the power inside of him and and if the uh, the Maggie here had the power back, that she could definitely make it barrier a lot stronger so that way these black these black gens could get in at all. But Titus now, after storing so much magoy in him for like the last fourteen years, he now unleashes this in, in one final spell. And this spell that he was using, it was to free Mogamet. And we see now that this spell, it came with like a heavy price. But we see that the furnace, it was now covered in a white Ryuk. And we actually go like into the past where we see Mogamet here, who was looking at this woman, you know, crying for a child. And when we have, you know, the current Mogamet, who, who has now fallen, we see that he was trying to get his younger self to like hit this woman. But right before he could do that, we have Titus here appearing and stopping him. Because, you know, Titus was saying that he does not hate the, the Goy at all. And we see that, you know, Mogomet here, he only hated his fate. He never hated, you know, regular people. It was just his fate that, that, that he hated so much that he, like, took his hate from that and put it onto the Goy. And so now that, like, Titus has stopped him, he has freedom from the furnace. But at the same time, it like caused him his life. As we see at the end of the spell, only his bones were left. And so now, now that uh, Mogamet here is free, we have all the black gens are now disappearing. As the, uh, as the as we all know that the uh, Ryuk is now gone. And it all gathers, you know, where the furnace was. And so we see that it's not over yet. As we have, you know, all this black Ryuk gathering in one spot. And we see now that it's, that it's like sucking out all the Magoy from Mogamet. So even though, you know, he was in that state of, of his body being, you know, black like that, he still had all this Magoy inside of him. And this, and this, and this mass of black for you, you know, it, 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 it absorbed it all. And at the end of that, you know, that right there obviously killed him. But we see like this this massive orb of like dark Ryuk now rising right into the sky at and it did the short of the school. Sorry about that. I, I had to go handle something. Now, where'd I leave off? I believe I left off at this black at the black orb now that we seen, you know, the short of the school. And now we see that when the black mass is now rising into the air, it like shoots out this like laser into the sky. And that causes another black mass to come down. And we see kind of like these arms or something, you know, coming out of it. It was definitely like a little bit weird. But we see now that Althamon, they're now there as well, and they clearly know what's going on. And then we have, you know, the new emperor or empress of the Ko Empire, Goyo Kuen. She's now there, and apparently, you know, she's calling this mass father. So that right there is like kind of odd. But we see now that from, uh, from Althamon, we actually learn that everybody in the 5th level district, they're actually, they're actually still alive. Nobody is dead. And they were saying that Mogamet here, he actually had enough Magoy, you know, that was equivalent to all those people. So that got that that goes to show you how powerful this man is. He, I, I'm guessing, you know, for him having, you know, that level of Magoy, and it would equal to that many people. 
I guess you could say that he was like kind of close to Maggie level, but at the same time, his magic, it would be infinite to theirs. So he definitely, you know, had a large source, a, a large source of power, but it wasn't infinite though. But you know, this this uh this this one man alone, he was able, you know, to basically be the equivalent of what this like mass is. So I'm guessing you could like kind of call it, you know, his consciousness. But you know, it's like an evil consciousness at the same time. But now this black mass, you know, the one that's like rising, that's the rising from the school and the one that descending from the sky. Aladdin was saying that, you know, we we, we can't allow these two masses to meet. So clearly, you know, if these two do meet up, then, you know, it's basically going to be the end. Because we all know from the flashback that we've seen of, uh, of, of uh, Al-Shaman. I mean, not, not Al-Shaman. What's it called? Uh, Al-Mataran? That's it, that's it. Then clearly, you know, different here is definitely not going to be a good thing. So I, I would love to hear what you guys think will happen next. Because clearly it can't be good. But this episode, it was definitely amazing. Even though, you know... This, this uh, season of Mac is almost over. These episodes have been just incredible. I, I, like, please, guys, leave some comments because I really want to hear what you guys thought about this. But as always, please do not forget to like the video and subscribe because that really helps me out. And you guys take it easy, and I'll see you all next time.